Totem poles are an ancient tradition of the coastal indigenous cultures of the Pacific Northwest. In Alaska, this includes the Tlingit, Haida, and Simshian peoples. These monumental sculptures were carved from the towering giants of the rainforest. Totems were similar to a picture book. Since there was no written language prior to contact, they were often used to document family history or lineage. Clan events, rites of passage, honor a great person, or stand as a lasting memorial. A clan leader would commission a master carver from an opposite clan to carve the totem. This maintained social balance. Totems are usually read from the top down, with the top figure representing the clan, and the bottom figure being the most honored. Traditional artwork was usually painted with three colors, reddish brown, bluish green, and black. Respect forms the core of all process during the carving, raising, and naming of a pole. Respect for all life, as well as the past, present, and future generations. Each totemic story teaches respect and the connection between all things especially the complex clan relationships. In 2002, the Alaska Native Heritage Center commissioned Tlingit master carver Nathan Jackson to design and carve a 30-foot totem pole with the goal of having the project completed in a traditional fashion. In 2003, dream turned to reality. After a year of building suspense, an unprecedented symbol had arrived home. One of the things that took place with this particular totem pole is that it was brought about by the uh, Alaska Native Heritage Center in wanting to present something that would speak to all Native people. The box has uh, the raven on this side and the eagle on this side. On this particular pole, what I do is I get a profile line. Okay. Once I uh, kind of grid it out, I'm Klingit Indian. In our language, we call it Tlingit. People are from the shore or people from the tide. My Klingit name is Yeshyadi, which means raven child or raven baby. So that came even before my English name, which is Nathan. I'm from a raven house. And our clan symbol is Sakai. Red cedar is considered the tree of life because it has many different uses to it. In the olden days, the way that they selected the wood was down in the valley area where the river or creek is running so that the, the tree would be pretty straight as it would go up. And all you see is just nothing but a straight big old trunk because the branches reach towards the sky. I think one of the things that they did, though, is they talked to the trees. For me, I just whistle. This pole has been uh, called by our people a sukudakate, which means wisdom pole. But we call it opening the box of wisdom. Tlingit is my first language and I had to learn English before, you know, uh, attending school. I attended a lot of ceremonies in uh, tradition and also speaking Tlingit and hearing all the different things that were going on in Tlingit as far as what needs to be done and why it was done. Well, we 
lay our hands as this pole, we are laying our hands with our ancestors. Additionally, we carry these poles with human spirit and human strength. We will carry our culture. This land where our grandfathers have walked on will hear our voice on this land. The top figure is supposed to be a clan leader or uncle that has a, what we call a shadaku sock, which is a, a kind of potlatch hat, conical type hat that was used by a chief or clan leader. Then he is holding with his right hand a speaker staff, which means that he is a type of person that gets up and speaks at important events then on his left hand, he is holding a raven rattle. The elder on the top represents wisdom and knowledge because that's where all the old stories come from. Then the nephew is holding up the box cover, which he is the one that took the box cover off the bentwood box, which is between his legs. And he's got a tunic that doesn't have any particular representation on it. It just uh, has a kind of a man figure. The bentwood box itself has the eagle type of design in the flat and then uh, a raven on the left side. The hand position is uh, accepting. So just accepting, so that's what that represents. And also at the same time pointing down to the eagle and the raven below that. And then below the eagle and raven is the children. They have two headbands. The one on the eagle side has a killer whale, which is a boy, and uh, he also has a eagle paddle. The girl has a beaver headdress or headband, and then she is holding a raven drum. The children are the recipients of wisdom and knowledge. The uncle, nephew, passing all that down. So that's basically the, the uh, story behind this particular poll. a whole lot of lack of knowledge today. There's a whole lot of our traditions and a whole lot of our stories and the values of our people that uh, is, is no longer with us. So in the limited knowledge we have, cover all the things we feel that our ancestors relate to us is, you know, very important still. Normally, you know, year, years gone by from uh, probably in the early or late 1800s or even early 1900s, these ceremonies would take uh, days, even up to two weeks, maybe three weeks. Well, we didn't have any writing. There wasn't a writing system. So this was a, was a time for young people to, to hear their history being told and also it was a time for us to continue to remember our history where it would not be lost. So all these things were done for a purpose. And through all this history and all the things that were being brought out, there was feasting and dancing. But first of all, speeches were being done and history would take a very long time in those days to be told. Represents all the nations of Alaska, not just the Tlingit people. And this is the first time that this ceremony has ever been conducted by the Tlingit people, where we 
We raise a poll in another country. In Tlingit tradition, there had to be a balance and there had to be an answer for a speech by the opposite clan. They would have to take mental note as far as what was being said and who said what and remember the name. And then they'd have to respond back in order to balance and in order to show uh, respect to the opposite clan that they were listening to what was being said. once a living thing, deserves to live just like we do. And that is the reason why we do these ceremonies. We will now give it a name. This poll will be known as From now on, it cannot be changed. That is the name of it, given to it by all the people for all the people, all our grandchildren. When our people looked at the trees, they were very important to our people. The tree to our people were the lungs of the earth. We don't want our grandchildren to be walking through their father's lands like tourists taking pictures of totem poles and wondering what the names mean. Words may be misunderstood and have negative effect. His words were always for encouragement. That is the way that we chose the peacemaker. We couldn't just select an individual who was foolish, who was not serene, and didn't have peace within himself. And it was a, it's an honor for us to have chosen Nathan Jackson to be our Hoa Khan. Hoa Khan means deer. Hoa Khan is a dance representation to make sure that um, there's no animosity, uh, there's no um, backstabbing. This dance is, is to, to make sure that if we should offend you or embarrass anybody in any way, that the feathers that will be coming out of this shakiat, like that feather, we want our words to touch you lightly. When you talk, you, you can say a few things that would cause uh, rivalries or uh, hurt feeling and, and they use the dance itself to signify peace to the people that are coming to a particular event. There's usually eagle down that is put in the headdress. In the dance, sea lion whiskers disperse the eagle down amongst the people, representing the words spoken. So that's the reason why that particular dance is done, so that there be no bad feelings amongst the people. When we acknowledge, recognize, and accept that other human being, then and only then can we begin to communicate the wisdom and the love and the knowledge that we have as human beings. The wisdom doesn't stand in this tree. It stands in your heart. It's in you right now. All the resources that we have is actually from the elders. 
by looking at it, you, you can't really say that total, that the elders played the main focus in this particular story. It's more for the children as well, for the future. The first of its kind. This totem stands for all humanity.